Now that we have our front end set up, we can start actually developing. Before we do any front end development though, we need to make sure that behind the scenes, we are always recompiling our code. So let's switch over to the terminal and run npm run watch. Remember, this is the command that keeps watching our files. If anything changes, it automatically triggers a recompile. So when you have a compiled successfully, we are ready to start development. All right, so let's head back to PHP Storm. So I want to take some time to start talking about the basics of Vue. Now, Vue is a framework of its own and really requires an entire series for us to explore everything that it can actually do. The simple goal of this lesson is just to get your feet wet. We're not going to be able to touch on any of the advanced things that Vue can do. All I want to do is create a simple component based off of the example component that actually ships with Laravel. So let's take a look at that right now. If we go into resources, JS, and then components, there is this example component. And this is the basics of a view component. Think of a view component as an all in one file that contains a template, meaning something for you to render on the browser, a script section, which is where all of the JavaScript and view stuff will actually live. And then typically you'll have another one for style, which is where the component specific CSS styling lives. So when you compile all of this, it will actually take care of separating the template, the script and the style. You don't have to worry about any of that. Now, if you haven't explored any of the modern JavaScript, this single file concept will take a little bit of getting used to because we are kind of afraid of having this extremely large JavaScript file that is difficult to navigate through. But if you componentize your application all the way around, all of your components actually end up being extremely reusable and small. There's no need for you to have a gigantic component. Rather, you want to have small components, a lot like when we talked about controllers. You want your controllers to be small, only really have a couple of lines in them. In the case of view components, they're also free. You can use components inside components inside components. And the whole point of having components is that they are reusable. So what I'd like to do is turn this example component into a button. And I know a button is a very simple component that you can use throughout your entire website. So that way our app has a specific component to use every time it needs a button. So that's going to be a cool example of how to use a view component. So let's start with the basics. I'm going to go ahead and erase everything. And the most important gotcha that everybody runs into right away is that a view needs a parent div that covers the entire template. So the very first thing you need to do is just open a div and don't touch it. Everything else will be inside of this div. So always keep that in mind. Let's start with a very basic button. And we'll say that we want that to have a type of submit and we'll make that customizable and let's put some text in it just for now, my button. And we see that we do have a console log inside. So just the basics of export default mounted is just an event. So when view mounts the component, it will call whatever code is inside of here. Think of that as the jQuery document ready type of thing. Whenever the view component is ready to go, that's when mounted gets called. And this is typically where you will trigger any Ajax calls or anything like that that you need to use. So we'll keep that blank for now. And let's just add some styling just for our button. So let me add a class of my button. And I want to say that my buttons will have a background color of, let's make it a dark gray. And now let's apply that class to our button class my button all right now how do we use this component well right now it's called example component and what i want to show you is if we open up the app.js this is where that component gets initiated and actually put inside of our compiled file if you make a component you have to register it so this is where you register it a lot like when we talked about creating a middleware you create your middleware but then you need to register it with the app same exact thing. So let's change the name. I'm going to change this to my button and let's change the name of the actual view file to my button. All right. So let's refactor this to change the name. 
rename my button dot view refactor save and now we get an error and there we go now we get a build successful throughout all of this you're gonna see this window keep popping in and out it just means that webpack is continuing to recompile our code all right so now that we have this how do we actually use this component let's go to home so anywhere in our code, we're going to use an HTML like syntax to actually add our component. So I'm going to say my button and that's it. So now my button will be translated into this template right here. Let's hit save. Let's head back to the browser and see if we made any mistakes. So there we are. So we have my button, right? Obviously it doesn't do anything right now. Let's do a little bit more styling on it. Let's make that a color of white let's add a little bit of padding let's do maybe 10 and then 5 all right so 10 pixels 5 pixels hit save you see it recompiled let's head back refresh all right that's looking a little better let me go ahead and make this maybe 15 let's go back refresh and that's the flow you're going to make some changes you're going to go back you're going to hit refresh and you just got to wait for it to recompile sometimes let's give it a little bit more padding hit save go back hit refresh there we go. That's looking better. Now let's give it a font weight of bold. Save. Recompile. So our button is looking okay. Now what I would like to do is I would like to be able to customize the text for our button. Now one fantastic thing about Vue is that it is data driven. That means that you don't have to dive into the DOM, pick an object by ID or class, and then save that to a variable. And every time you need to access it, you need to go back into the DOM and change that. It is reactive. So let's change that button. And what I'll actually use vText. And vText allows us to bind into this button. So let's use text. So this text variable, I want to be able to customize it from out here. So I want to be able to say something like text equals my new text button. So if it's working, that is the text that I want to display inside of my button. So to make that work, we need to accept that as a property. So we could say props and props accepts an array of props. And the prop that we're accepting right now is text. So let's put that in quotes, text. Let's hit save, let that recompile, hit refresh, and there we are. So my new text button. So that is working. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to be able to customize what type of button this is. So to do that, we can actually put colon in front of type, which turns this into a binded property. And instead of submit, we'll say type. So now we can accept a prop of type. We can come back here and say, all right, so my type is going to be submit. Hit save, come back, hit refresh, and everything is working just fine. So from here on out, instead of using just a regular button, we've wrapped a button around this my button class. And every time, for example, we need to change anything about our button styling, we just come to this one view component and change it one time to change it in the entire app. And that's the beauty of it. So that is a very basic example of a button. There is one more thing I'd like to show you in this video to wrap it up on the basics of Vue, and that is how to fetch some data from the back end. Let's dive back into app.js and let's take a look at this bootstrap. If we click through this file, we see that down here, there's this window.axios. Axios is a library that allows us to fetch data from the back end. It makes this process very, very simple. So the first thing I want to do is let's work on the PHP backend for this. So I want to make a dedicated controller for that. Let's do PHP artisan make controller testing view controller. Obviously, this won't do much. We're just playing around with view right now. So let's head back to PHP storm and let's go to testing view controller. And I'm just going to make a dummy index method here that simply returns maybe some JSON data. Now notice that I'm using an array syntax. Laravel will actually convert this to JSON by itself. Even though we're returning a PHP array, in the back end, Laravel will actually give us a JSON data. So I'm just gonna say name John Doe, 
and we'll just keep it simple with a single name equals John Doe. So I want to be able to fetch this data through view. Now, in order to be able to do that, of course, we need to set up an endpoint for ourselves. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, we've been talking about the web routes, right? And we have all of these web routes right here. But this is going to be an endpoint for an API. There is actually a dedicated file for API routes. Let's take a look at that now. If we dive into the routes folder, let me close resources, routes, you see that we have web, which is what we've been working with, but we also have API. So let's take a look at this file. So let's add a route to API instead. Let's say I want a post route and I want it to be testing or maybe just view. And we know we're going to hit that testing view controller at index. Now, this API route actually has a prefix of API. So you always have to prefix all of your routes with API. So this route will actually be API slash view. Now, you don't have to explicitly add that. It will do it by itself. Let's hit save. And I think we have our endpoint sort of set up and ready to go. So how do we fetch some data? Let's do it right here, right at mounted, just for now. And let's just say axios dot post. And where are we posting? API slash view, right? Let's go back to API. So this is what we're targeting. Now remember, anything inside your API routes directory needs to be with an API prefix. And that's what this is right here. Now, if we had any data to pass through, we'd pass that as an object. In our case, we don't have anything right now. And this actually returns a promise. We'll use the then notation. So inside of here, we'll say we'll have a response, which means it succeeded. We'll use the arrow syntax. And in here, we'll actually have a response object. So let's save our data. Let's just say this dot test. And we'll add that now in just a second equals response dot data. This test variable, we need to initiate that. So let's add a data property. Data properties have to return a function. And let's return an object out of here. And we'll just say test. And we'll set that equal to null just for now. Let's add our comma here at the end. So how do we use this dot test? Just for the time being, I want to use it as our V text. So instead of text, let's say test. Let's hit save. Let's go back to the browser. Hit refresh. And sure enough, we have name equals John Doe. And that makes sense because we're actually returning a JSON object. So let's fetch test dot name. Hit save. Go back. Hit refresh. And sure enough, we see John Doe right in here. So as you know, we're actually fetching that through an API route that is hitting this controller right here, and we're returning John Doe. So if I change that to another name, hit refresh, and there we are. So with this basic example, we've been able to fetch some data from the back end and bring it to our front end. And this is something that you're going to do all the time. So let's recap everything that we did. So we made a new view component that we're planning to use as a button for our entire project. Now, on the original implementation, we were passing in some data right through here. And we can still do that. Of course, you can have as many of these. These are called props, and they need to be declared down here. So we declared a text prop, which belongs to this text prop right here. And we declared a type prop, which is right here. But then we took it a step further and we made a very basic example of how to fetch some data from the back end. And we used Axios for this. Axios created a post request to an API route slash view. And then on a successful response, we saved the response data to this dot test. Now this dot test, of course, was declared in a data object. And this we're setting it equal to null but we know that when the component is mounted, everything in this block will run. And that's what it actually fetched the data from our back end. Now to make this work, we made this testing view controller, which simply just returns a PHP array. Now Laravel behind the scenes will take this array and actually convert it to JSON because it assumes that you're just trying to fetch some data through an API. Now in terms of our routes, we did not declare a route in our typical web routes file we declared it in our API route file. Now, the real reason why we went with the API route is because this has slightly different middleware 
to accept API requests and is specifically tuned just for that. So this is where all of your API endpoints will actually be. So we declared a new route of method post called view. Notice that view, our route in here, does not have that API prefix. That is not necessary. Any route inside this entire API file will always have that API in front of it. So we declare it just as view, but in our component, we do have to call API slash, and then whatever you put in your route. And then we simply call testing view controller at index. And through all of the magic of Laravel, we hit refresh, and sure enough, our button is fetching its name through the back end. So those are the basics of Vue. We'll cover a lot more about Vue in its own dedicated series, but this will get you through the very basics of Vue.